You've no doubt seen them in your supermarket. Plainly packaged, simply labeled, no brand products. You've probably tried them and may have liked them. Well, that's what one poll shows. Half the people asked said that no brand products are a better value than name brand products. Why then do so few of us regularly buy the no brands? Well, we asked consumer correspondent John Stossel to find out. John? It's simply because people worry about the quality. No brand products go against every sales pitch we've ever heard. They don't promise to be bigger, better, stronger, just cheaper. And they are cheaper, typically 30 to 50% cheaper than the brand names. Now, we've been taught if something's half price, there's got to be something wrong with it. Is that true for no brand products? I tried to find out. These are four of America's finest products. They're so this is a commercial for one supermarket chain's line of no brands. They call them no frills. With no frills, you can save up to 40%. There's just no comparison in price. Only you can make the comparison in quality. Do you buy them? Well, I haven't really tried a lot of them. The ones that I've bought, I like, but I haven't tried many. The ones that you've bought, you like? I have liked, yeah, but I haven't tried all of them. But they're cheaper. Why don't you try more of them? Because I'm always afraid it's going to be crummy. <laughs> You know what I mean? No, you don't. I do. So does she. I've been told they don't taste as good as other products, and I just don't buy them. So you're not even going to try them? No. Most shoppers are afraid of no brand. Maybe it's the names that even sound like low quality. Makes you wonder where they came from. Actually, they often come from the same place as the brand names. Take Peas, for example. This is a farm in Wisconsin. Whether they become brand names or no brands, all peas start out equal. No one, after all, tries to grow low-quality peas. Picking the peas is what's crucial. There is only one half day when a pea is at its peak. Young, sweet, tender. That's government grade A. If it's picked eight hours later, that same pea may be grade B or C. Older, therefore a little starchier. The canner separates the grade A from the grade B and C peas. But notice, there's no label on the cans. That's so these peas can go anywhere. They become this no-brand label or this store brand. Canner Fritz Friday also sells brand names. You might sell to Del Monte or yes, Green that, Giant. That could happen. And they'd sell it under their name. Right. That doesn't mean Del Monte and the no-brand will be the same. Usually, name-brand labels go on grade A cans, while no-brand labels go on grade B or C cans. Usually, I say, because when we bought peas from stores around the country, hid the labels, and had a government grader regrade them, he found these two no brands were a higher grade than this can of Del Monte. And the Del Monte costs about 20 cents more. In general, however, we did find the no brand foods were usually of lower grade than the brand names. But when you know what lower grade means for some foods, you may not care. No brand rice is just regular rice with broken pieces left in instead of sifted out. This no brand spaghetti is made the same way in the same factory as print spaghetti. The no brand flour is simply less finely ground. It has more bran and wheat germ left in. That, in fact, gives it a little more protein. What about no brand peanut butter? At this California factory, the only difference is in the size of the peanuts used. The larger, smoother ones go into the brand. The smaller, wrinkled peanuts into the no brand. The only difference I can see between the peanut butters is that the generic is a little darker. That's because this machine, which rubs the skins off the peanuts, doesn't work well on smaller peanuts. So with the no brand, some skins are left in. Now, you pay a lot to keep the skins out of your brand name peanut butter. This company's brand name sells for 34 cents a jar more than the no brand. Nutritionally, there is no difference. In fact, every nutritionist we talked to said, in all categories of food, no brand is just as nutritious as the brand name. No difference. But what about taste? Taste, of course, is the reason we buy one food over another. So we ran a taste test. No frill spaghetti against Prince spaghetti. No brand peas from Friday canning against Del Monte peas. No brand light peaches against Del Monte light peaches. Plain wrapped peanut butter against Skippy. We paid a scientific testing laboratory to bring in a random sample of 50 adults to taste peas, spaghetti, and peaches. And for the peanut butter, let's go to the experts after all, 50 kids. For scientific accuracy, no taster knew the purpose of the test. 
They didn't know they were comparing brands to generics. All they knew is that they were to compare two foods and say which they liked best. With the spaghetti, how many of you like C? The result? With peas and spaghetti, most testers did prefer the brand. Still a quarter of them liked the no brand more. And with peanut butter and peaches, surprise, the no brands tested equal to the brands. That surprised a lot of testers. Yes, I am. I've tried uh, no name brands before, and I really wasn't too pleased with them. But I guess side by side, they, I guess they kind of stack up. As a rule of thumb, I never buy the no-name brand. I just thought they were inferior quality, not that I had any basis to go on. And you were fooled here. Exactly. Many of the peanut butter tasters were fooled, too. You put down A. A. And you thought, what was wrong with B? It was dry. What's your favorite peanut butter? Skippy. But you thought B was dry? Yeah. The brand name did have its fans. The other one sort of tastes like glue. Glue? Yeah. More kids might have felt that way if they had seen the label on the jars. When my kids see a generic label, they all say, oh, this is no good. They, you know, it's uh, junk or it's cheap. Sometimes I even buy jelly in a generic brand and put it in a, Wel in a Welch's jar, and they would eat it, and they didn't know, honestly. <laughs> but when you don't see the label, our test and other tests have shown that many people prefer the taste of the generic. But no brand food is scary. Many more people buy the non-food generics. You can see it just looking at the shelves. Shoppers see the lower price and grab it, sometimes just leaving the brand name there. And some of the no brand products are just as good as brand names. Bleach, for example. Ralph Supermarket's Vice President, Al Maraska. Bleach is, is identical to other bleach. Here we have bleach manufactured by the same company under different names, Plain Wrap and Purex. Plain Wrap retails for 73 cents and Purex retails for 89 cents. A significant saving for the same product. Of course, since bleaches are alike, what does that say about his more expensive Ralph's store brand bleach? Someone would have to be a dope to buy your Ralph's bleach. In the category of bleach, the people that want to buy the name brand are paying for the advertising and the marketing value. To get the exact same liquid. That's right. Other non-foods are different. How different? We ran some tests. First, liquid dish detergent. The soap industry actually has a standard test for comparing liquid detergents. It's called the dish count test. As it sounds, it's done by washing dishes. Not just any way. She's washing so slowly and gently. So the test will measure how well the detergent cleans, not how hard she rubs. We tested the best-selling brand, Ivory, against eight generics. Ivory won. It washed more dishes, 13. The best-performing generic, Pathmark Stores No Frills, washed 11. Pathmark's Vice President Bob Wonderly says, so what? So you get perhaps an 80% increase in the number of dishes that you can wa wash per ounce but you're paying 400% more. True. Ivory costs $1.99. No frills, 49 cents. That means per penny, Ivory washed only 16 dishes, while no frills washed 56. The other no brands didn't do that well, but they, too, were better buys than Ivory. Next, trash bags. The garbage bag industry has a standard test for trash bag strength called appropriately the drop test. We hired a Boston research firm to do it for us on Glad bags and nine generics. First, they fill the bag with 40 pounds of tree bark. Then they dangle it just off the ground for two minutes. That's supposed to imitate us carrying out the trash. Then they raise it to five feet and... That was a Glad bag. It passed the test. Seven out of nine no brands failed the test. But two of the cheap bags, one from Jewel Supermarkets in Chicago, one from Smith Stores in Los Angeles, that's this one, did as well as the Glad bag did. These are the bags the ads don't tell us about. This is a Glad three-ply trash bag from the number one name in trash, and that is a typical bargain bag. The ads also don't tell you that Union Carbide, which makes Glad bags, also makes bargain bags. In fact, they made this week one. It's strange. Many companies that run anti-bargain brand ads also make bargain brands. Oh, no! Feeding a bargain brand dog food? Cheaper! Dog food's dog food. No. Ralston Purina runs these anti-generic dog food commercials. But we were told that Ralston makes most generic cereals. We heard they made these, for example. 
We called Ralston to ask about it. Ralston said, no, we don't make generics. I couldn't believe it. So a few weeks later, we called again. Again, Ralston said, we make no generics. So the owner of this small New York City grocery store offered to help us out. He called the local Ralston sales office. Do you, any, do you have any samples of the generic in your office? Because I have guys out that way regularly. I'd like you to see, you know, one or two of them if I could. And a few weeks later, three cases arrived. Sure looks like generics to me. Sure does. Says Ralston Purina on the box. Now, why would they have a cover-up over something like cornflakes? I called Ralston back, and a spokesman told me he wasn't covering up. He just didn't know they made generics, because it's such a small part of their business. Yet we've learned it's a $20 million a year business for Ralston. Many companies are secretive about their generics. Pathmark's Wonderly buys generics from brand name companies. What companies? Uh, I can't release that information. Why not? Well, um, very simply, uh, they don't want uh, the public to know that uh, they're packing the products under our label that are competing with the brands that they're trying to establish. I doubt that Ralston would want you to know that it sells as generics the exact same cereal it sells under the more expensive Ralston name and store brand names. If you knew that, you'd always buy the no brand. A final point. There certainly are some brand name products that are simply better, stronger, thicker, whatever. With some products, you may want that. But with others, you may simply be paying for qualities you don't need. For example, uh, we sell a paper towel that um, ostensibly, if you tear it in half and you wet it, it will support two cups of coffee. Or a pie plate. Mike, put that pie on here. Our no-frills paper towel won't do that. The point is that I think one has to question whether consumers really buy uh, paper towels to bring them home to support cups of coffee, or do they buy them to mop up spills in the kitchen and uh, clean windows. And the no-frills is much cheaper. The no-frills sells for almost 50% less than the national brand. So it depends on the uh, product and how you use it. But you can get good quality products and save 50%. That's right, though 40% is more typical. But what surprised me most about our survey was the result of the food tests. A third to half the people like the generic foods better. They are just as nutritious and much cheaper. Thank you.